Yo, what is going on guys? Four Crooks here and welcome to the channel. So before we hop into the bread and butter of today's video, a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members without whom this channel would not be possible. I really mean that. If you want to help support the channel, the best way to do so is with a like and sub, but if you want to go one step further, I also do have YouTube memberships enabled as well as a Patreon that includes some PvP coaching, access to private Discord channels, shoutouts on all my videos, custom emojis, so if any of that sounds interesting to you, there's a link to everything in the description down below. <music> guys so i'm going to be showing you two iterations of this build now the first iteration i'm going to show you is my personal favorite now this is not quote unquote the meta slave magicka dragonite dueling build but it gets the job done and it kind of counters the meta so to speak and allows you to face tank magplars and and not have to play like a little biosh in your back bar and run away from templars you can actually man up and fight them this is why i love this build so so much so character sheet here's everything completely unbuffed i'm not gonna bother boring you guys with stats because quite frankly this is one of the hardest hitting builds you're ever going to come across besides the second build i'm going to show you which is super all in on the damage so what sets are we running the very first set we're running we're running dual wield a draugurkin sword and this should be a mace but uh, i ran this dungeon quite a lot of times and quite frankly i was tired of trying to farm the mace but we have on the front bar, we have Sword and Earn Home with a Flame Damage Enchantment. This procs a Burning Stats effect, which can... Okay, if you guys don't know what this set is, first of all. Max Magicka, Offensive Penetration, gives you recovery. So the five piece, doing direct damage to an enemy, places a Ghostly Curse on your enemy for six seconds. Cursed enemies take 617 extra damage from all of your damaging abilities. This effect can occur once every nine seconds. This is every bit of damage that you do. This is from damage over time proc sets. This is from the burning sass effect. This is from any dots you have going on. This is from light attacks. This is from poisons on your weapons. Literally anything that you have going on on your opponent takes an additional 600 damage on top of it, right? Now, this gets really scary because what this does is this adds the extra damage to the, the base damage of the, of the ability and then it can crit so technically this set can crit right so this makes your dots hit so freakishly hard so the idea is the more dots the better so when you see this debuff pop up on your opponent it's time to go offensive the odds of them healing through this with you pressuring them along with a cc is very unlikely they have to go on the back bar and play defensive so ideally you'll want the sword and the mace just for the passives uh, the mace gives you more spell pin which you definitely need because people are very very tanky in duels so um, i have a disease um enchantment on this one this is just a proc the uh minor defile to reduce healing uh, this is it, it's just so good you have about 50 percent chance to proc this across the board every time it procs um we're running charge straight on this just because the charge changes this really helps with our sustain to get our status effects out and yes the burning status effect uh also benefits from a draugurkin so yeah it really hits hard guys back bar you know I have to run Iron Blood. Like, come on. Like, this is a very OP set in general. It doesn't matter if it's in Battlegrounds, Dueling, Open World. This is just all-around good set. I really suggest farming it if you have not already. Now, on the back bar enchantment, you can run two if you're doing Dueling. Uh, you can either do the Weapon Damage enchantment or you can do a Weakening enchantment. A Weakening enchantment is really, really good, too, because it reduces their base weapon and spell damage by 350, which means it stacks multiplicatively. So, in reality, it's more like five or six hundred reduction to their spell and weapon damage which reduces the damage obviously as well as their healing um you can also run poisons uh, that's perfectly fine too double dot poisons would be the preferred because this does help out uh, draugurkin as well now the two piece you want magnet incarnate uh if you want to get really cheesy you can toss on like zons or something like that but i tried to keep this uh, tournament friendly to where you have zero damaging proc sets i guess you could consider jogger kind of damaging proc set but it doesn't really because it just adds the damage to your dots and all the other attacks so yada yada 
So we're running the Cures of Iron Blood. You want this to be heavy to get the most benefits. Uh, you ideally want this to be reinforced, but uh, it is what it is. Now, your traits, I did not trait change these. You in duels, guys, well fitted is is okay, but this is more of an open world trait. You want to have sturdy and impen on all your gear. I would suggest four sturdy, three impen personally. So we got the sash, uh, Drogrigan, legs and pants, and then uh, one piece training for the shoes. Now for the jewelry, th this is where I spread off the path a little bit. I love having sustain since I'm not running Ellie Drain on this build. And we'll get into the 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 meta build here um, shortly after this. I always run one infused cost reduction. There is nothing worse than feeling like you're running low on Magicka in a fight, right? I, I absolutely hate that feeling. So for me, I run an infused cost reduction. You guys do not have to do this. You can probably get away with running another spell damage uh, weapon enchantment uh, or jewelry enchantment. That's entirely up to you. But on the other two, I definitely do have spell damage. Now for the mythic. As of making this video, I do not have the Mark and Ring of Majesty. I just got the lead, the, the the Fire Scourge band to drop yesterday, so I will finish farming this out today. But if you do not have the Mark and Ring of Majesty, a good alternative is also uh, Malkin's Band of Brutality. If you want to go that way, or even Ring of the Pale Order is pretty nice as well. Uh, entirely up to you, but the Mark and Ring of Majesty is definitely best in slot for doing right now. It, it just tanks you up quite a bit. So with everything proc your resistances so it's at 29,000 right now when magma incarnate procs this will go up to like uh 32 and then with the market range ring of majesty this will go up to 35 and then your physical resist will be sitting close to 30,000 as well now when it comes over to skills uh, this is my personal preference again not a lot of people run dual wield um i just like the dual on the mag dk this batch because the passives are really good and it bolsters your dot damage caught by quite a bit so we're running Engulfing Flames, Fossilized, and Talents. This is just so we can keep Power Lash proc most of the time. So this is what allows us to deal with Templars when they're going in for their, you know, their all-in combo, you know, with Balrogs and Power of the Lie, or Lame, Clever Alchemist, you know, that, that burst is really hard to tank through. So if you have access to Power Lash, it just really helps offset all the incoming damage that you're going to get on all the incoming chip, chip damage. You're burning Embers on the front bar with Leap. Uh, this is pretty standard if you want to run dual wield. Back bar, you know, degeneration. You don't have to run this here. I also run alliance spell drop pots, uh, which could arguably take the place of entropy. So if you wanted to do that, you could slot uh, eruption here as well. Eruption is very, very good in duels, especially when you run an infused cost reduction. Look at the cost on eruption. It's only 45 magic per second. So uh, next, you definitely want coagulating blood, rapid regions, must, and volatile armor. Uh, this proc to Drogrican as well. Well, what I mean by that is um, the dot from this actually does a lot of damage, first of all, and then Drogrican bolsters this as well. And then Flames of Oblivion, uh, this is your flex spot on the back bar if you run this setup. Now, if you run the, the next setup, you really don't have a flex spot whatsoever. So you can either use Flames of Oblivion uh, just as a casual um, filler slot here. It gives you crit on the back bar, which is really nice. Um, does a lot of damage too, plus it has a really high chance to apply the Burning Sass effect from this prox. Um, you can run wings if you're against a mag sork. Uh, mag sorks are just in a really weird spot, but uh, they can, if they run overload, yeah, wings help so, so much with them. And again, you can uh, slot on eruption if you want to go that route. And then back bar, I run cross of arm just because to deal with magplars as well as necromancers, this allows you to, you know, get through the beefy boy resistances to where you can actually burst them, right? Instead of just having them get down to like 20% health and then they just, just never die. Now, champion points for this one. Uh, we're going to use Mastered Arms, Deadly Aim, Thaumaturge, and Duels Rebuff, not Ironclad. This offsets any single target damage, which you have in your duels, most of which is single target, as well as the damage over time effects. So, this kind of double dips, whereas Ironclad does not reduce the damage of damage over time effects. So, Duels Rebuff for sure. Go over into the Red Tree. We are running Sustained by Suffering. Uh, Pain's Refuge, you don't necessarily have to have. Uh, you can change Pain's Refuge out with something, something else because you're only dueling one person, so you don't have a, a metric crap load of negative effects on you. Um, so you can swap this out to really whatever you want. Relentlessness, definitely, and then Survival Instincts is really nice um, because it reduces the cost of all your combat abilities and like blocking, roll dodging, break free. Uh, you guys get it. And then the green tree really doesn't matter. So that does it for your boy Horcrux's rendition of 
a dueling build. Iron Blood is really good for offsetting damage, especially with the... Everything just hits so hard in duels, man. You'd be surprised. So Iron Blood actually gives you a chance to think. Now, if you want to go the meta route for the Magic of Dragonite, here is the build for you. So front bar. You do not want dual wield, first of all. I just don't have the Inferno Staff because I, quite frankly, I got tired farming this, this set. Um, I actually fell asleep doing it in my chair at once, so... Uh, you want the Inferno Staff charged. Inferno Staff charge of Draugrkin, uh, blah, blah, blah. The rest of this is going to be the same, though. You're going to have Magna Incarnate. You're going to have a One Piece Training. Uh, we're using Gallant's Changes as a special item in which you can farm. Uh, Magna Incarnate again. Draugrkin, and then you want to run Burning Spell Weave on the back bar. So, yeah, it took me forever to get this, but now it shouldn't take you guys long to get this uh, in the past it took me 112 runs to get this freaking staff but uh it is what it is uh defending on the back bar again with a damage enchantment you could either use weakening or weapon uh damage increase i did the weapon damage increase because this is all in on your damage you hit like a max truck man like it it is even with iron blood like you chew through people using iron blood such as myself it is so much pressure um on the jewelry pieces since you are going to have a staff with charge you need to change the burning spell weave to reduce magic cost. This needs to be spell damage. I uh, made a mistake I'm making this build, um, but uh, this needs to be um, spell damage. And again, the ring, instead of pill order, you need the mark and ring of majesty if you have it. If you don't, pill order works really good because it does give you some healing over time to help you stay capped off. Now, when it comes to skills, run Ellie Drain on the front bar, obviously. Run Shattering Rocks because you're not worried about the off balance stats effect. And it's nice to have a, a little kind of pseudo heal on your front bar when you stun someone. Flames of Oblivion, this is your spammable, just so you can uh, proc up your Molten Whip and maintain your Seething Fury stacks. Burning Embers, Ferocious Leap. On the back bar, we have Degeneration, Coag, Rapid Regen, Volatile Armor, and then Engulfing Flames on your back bar. When it comes to your champion points, it is going to be a little bit different. This is the way I like to run it. I like to run Fighting Finesse. Deadly Aim, Master Arms, and then Duel's Rebuff for your Blue Tree Passives. Now when it comes to Red Tree Passives, you need to tank up a bit. So I add points into Balanced Vitality and Fortified, Survival Instincts, and then we come over into uh, this guy right here. The only thing you really need is Relentlessness. You don't really need uh, Sustain by Suffering. And again, you don't need Pain's Refuge because you're only finding one person. You don't have too many negative effects on you. And our Sustain is perfectly fine. So Sliding Sustain by Suffering here. Uh, it just isn't worth it in my opinion. You might as well go more tanky items. It's going to help you uh, more often, right? So, that is the build, guys. Now, you're going to get a lot of salt. I mean, it, it's hard finding a DK with this. Okay, it, it, it really is. The only classes that are really going to beat you is another DK running this. A Stam DK or a Magplar. Uh, Magplars are going to just absolutely just, just wreck you. It's an uphill fight the entire time. So if a Magplar packs you up bringing this build, it's not Horcrux's fault. It's just the game's fault at this point. Bubble is pretty broken. And then the fact that all of your healing and also your damage comes shares the same resource pool is why this game is a little unbalanced right now for some classic, especially the Magplar, because the only thing you have to do is stack spell damage. You don't have to worry about spell pin. You don't have to worry about your maximum stats, nothing, because you're healing as well as your damage come from the same resource pool, which is weapon spell damage, which needs to be broken apart. I know this is a bit of a ramble, but your heals need to come from your stat pools, right? And in, in addition, proc sets also scale off weapon spell damage. So when you have the trifecta of proc set damage, your overall damage, and also your healing coming from the same resource pool, that leads to a lot of broken classes and a lot of broken setups. And that's why Magpar is performing so well now. So yeah break up the stat pools <laughs> but uh this has been the build guys i love dueling i really do but the people in the dueling arenas are uh just kind of kind of super sweaty so i will duel on occasion uh on stream and not too often just because it does get pretty toxic so if you found this video at all helpful i would really appreciate a like and subscribe and don't forget to enable the bell icon because sometimes i do put out some pretty decent content and again guys if you have any PvP clips, send them to me. My email's down in the description or send them to me in the Discord as well. I have YouTube memberships, also Patreon with some PvP coaching, all that fun stuff. The description has everything that you guys need and I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.